let's talk about the basics of projectile motion. Projectile motion is a form of motion where an object moves in a parabolic path. Projectile motion only occurs when there is one force applied at the beginning on the trajectory, after which the only interference is from gravity. Let's look at the motion of this ball if at the beginning it has an initial velocity of 10 meters per second. Let's look at its motion at specific points of its trajectory. Take note that we have a symmetrical parabolic path. This is the highest point of the trajectory giving us the maximum height of the motion. At every point of the trajectory, the velocity changes. If we represent those velocities using an arrow, you would notice that they are two-dimensional vectors so we could get their x and y components. The y component of the velocity of the ball at the highest point is 0. Let's say that the angle at which the ball leaves the ground is 75 degrees with respect to the horizontal. The x components of the velocities at every point can be computed by multiplying cosine theta and the original velocity. The y components will be sine theta times the original velocity. And take note that the angle changes throughout the trajectory. So at the initial point, we can compute for the x and y components since the angle is given at that point. The x component of the initial velocity is 2.59 meters per second and the y component of the initial velocity will be 9.66 meters per second. The angle at the beginning of the trajectory is the same as the angle at the end as a result of the symmetrical parabolic path. Therefore. The initial velocity is the same as the final velocity including the x and y components but the direction of the y component will be opposite so it would be negative if we choose north as positive. The angle at the highest point is 0 with respect to the horizontal. Another thing to note here is that all the x components of any velocity at any point of the trajectory is equal to the x component of the initial velocity. You could also say that the height here is equal to the height on the other side if this line is parallel to the ground. The time it takes for the ball to reach its maximum height is the same time it needs for it to go back to the ground. The horizontal distance from the starting point of the motion to the landing point is called the range. To compute for the range, we multiply the x component of the initial velocity by the total time of the motion, meaning from the beginning until it lands. Now, if we only want this distance, then we only need the time from the beginning to this point of the trajectory. Same with this distance, we need the time from the beginning until this point of the trajectory. The horizontal motion of a projectile motion is uniform motion or the horizontal velocity of the ball at any point of its trajectory is not changing. That's why all the x components of all the velocities in the trajectory are the same. This is where the range formula is based from. On the other hand, the vertical motion has an acceleration but it's constant or uniformly accelerated motion. Since the only force that influences the ball's motion is the gravity, then the acceleration here is due to gravity which is 9.8 meters per second squared. I will be assigning north as positive and south as negative and since gravity is downwards, then I'll be using negative 9.8 meters per second squared at any point of the trajectory. 
The vertical motion actually is a free fall motion. So all the formulas that we used in free fall motion is applicable here. But we just need to emphasize that they apply only in the vertical or Y axis. So adding Y in the subscripts will help us avoid confusions. Now let's try to apply all those ideas in solving a problem. Let's say we were asked to find for the maximum height of the trajectory of this ball as well as the range. The initial velocity is 10 meters per second. We need the time from the beginning of the motion to the end to solve for the range. This is the highest point which will give us the maximum height. The angle is 75 degrees and we will be following a coordinate system where up is positive and down is negative. So we will use negative 9.8 meters per second squared as our acceleration due to gravity. The x component of the initial velocity is 2.59 meters per second and the y component is 9.66 meters per second. Again, these are the formulas that we can use in projectile motion. If I choose the beginning of the motion as the initial and at the highest point as the final, then I know that at the highest point, the y component of the velocity at this point is 0. The x component is the same, 2.59 meters per second. So this formula right here seems the easiest to use to solve for the height. Simple algebra will help us isolate what we need to solve. And plugging all the given, we will get 4.76 meters as the maximum height. Now, for the range, this is the formula. But we need the total time. These two formulas here can give us the time. I will use the first formula. The time that I will get using this formula will only from the starting point until the maximum height But multiplying it by 2 will give us the entire time of the motion. So our total time here is 1.98 seconds. As other option, you can actually use this formula. Since the ball landed at the same height as it was at the beginning, then the displacement will be 0. You plug all the other given and you will see that you have a quadratic equation. The x here represents the entire time or the total time from the beginning until the end. I am assuming that you know how to solve quadratic equations. The time here will be 1.97 seconds which is very much equal to what we have a while ago. So solving for the range, we will get 5.13 meters. You see, your knowledge on how to solve freefall motion problems will surely help in projectile motion. Also, practicing will help you a lot. So keep solving and I'll see you again next time.